real nice looking. We got a quartz vein down in here. So far it's showing a little bit of free mill gold. We're gonna crush all this up and hope we hit the bonanza. So we're gonna throw it on scale. We're nice and zeroed. We're right at 26 pounds. Here's our crushed up sample. It's uh, ground twice. It's pretty darn fine. But I wanted to show you guys something on the furnace here. This here is my smelting furnace. As you can see, I'm developing quite a bit of damage. We got some cracks. Those are a little bit bigger than I'd like to see. So the main thing you want to avoid with these furnaces is any sort of boil over out of your crucible whatsoever. I poured in bone ash so it can absorb uh, the residual fluxes and help extend and preserve the furnace here. The key number one rule to smelting and assaying is don't let your crucibles boil over. Be very vigilant to that. So you have 52 grams of cons. What we're going to do is add 75 grams of soda ash, 19 grams of borax, 18 grams of potassium nitrate, and we're going to add 46 grams of collector metal to the bottom of our crucible. Hopefully, crucible will hold up to the acidic nature of this flux. Mix it all up. And these bigger clumps are to bust the hammer. All right, crucible's preheated. change out my crushing filters to my smelting filters. Last time we had some trouble with the port getting stuck in the mold. This time around we're going to try some dry film high temp lubricant. Reaction complete! So here's our tiny bead from that hard rock sample. And you know what? This is actually pretty darn good. All right, batch number two, we got 268 grams of non-magnetic black sands cons with a tiny bit of gold. So we're gonna smelt it, see if we have any silver, platinum, and gold values that come out. We're gonna use the Chapman Flux for this, the bigger graphite crucible, and get her smelting. Right, let's see if the mold release works. It popped out. Now here we have our button. There goes the lead.
here's the pour cooling. You can see the glassy surface is breaking apart. It's still pretty hot, but I'm gonna see if I can't dump it. There it is. So that mold release definitely works. The button was attached right there. We're gonna coupel that and see what we get out of it. Well, smelting's done for the day. We'll pick back up where we left off tomorrow. Well, I picked up my first target. Iron conglomerate chunk. Whoa. Just created an avalanche. Somewhere back here, we got a good target. This is a new hermit pick. You can see why I need it to dig big holes. Hear that? Right there. Sweet! Well, we just came up with a chunk of ore on the metal detector. Oh man, there's definitely shiny. See all that in here? And that's on iron stained quartz. I don't know if you can see that, but here we got real shiny. It looks like pyrite. Here, here. This looks like magnetite. Add some jet dry. Oh, sure enough, look at that. Huge piles of magnetite. It's possible that the detector was hitting on the magnetite. But look at all that pyrite. Look at all that fool's gold, baby. So this here is our black sands button and I'm hammering off the slag. Now the reason we knocked the slag off, you can see I just broke it off there is so that when we put the button in the coupel, it coupels better, but most importantly, you don't want the slag boiling and bubbling off into your little furnace. There it is, guys. There's a little gold ball. That tells me that smelting the black sands from this area is absolutely not worth it. To roast a small sample and then smelt it in Chapman's flux. So you can see it's light brown. Around the edges it's starting to look black. We want to cook it all to that level. It's looking good. We're going to go ahead and take it off right now. So it ended up nice and red. This white stuff is flux thinner. It's primarily floor spark. We're going to go ahead and mix this up, load it into the crucible and get her smelt. So I decided to free up some old vials. I got this golden box, crushed hard rock. I got a small vial of ultra heavy black sand. We got some nice free mill golden chunks of rock. We got some wire gold fragments and something else. I might pull out some of those bigger wires. Uh, burning. Oh, shit. Oh my God. My knee felt like it was on fire. Holy moly. It had been cooling for a couple minutes. Look at this. Jeez. It's insane. This one's still green. So here's our tiny bead from that hard rock sample. During the cupellation process, the bead froze up on me right at the end. What I did was add a little bit of borax and a couple pieces of extra lead See if that'll remelt it and coupel away some more of those base metals. 